Hello everyone. This week's topic is reflective practice. Um, remember last week I asked you to uh, describe your teacher's beliefs in relation to your assignment one. So I've uh, collected two uh, belief statements from uh, Harry and Afi. So uh, in terms of um, beliefs about the best way to learn a language, Harry mentioned that um, he believes that um, learning a language should be best uh, done through the practice of using the language. And the more the student speaks, the more he or she learns. For Alfie, uh, listening is the best way to learn a language. With listening, uh, teachers also need to get the students to use the language. So teaching of um, language should be uh, using um, listening and include speaking and writing activities. So based on um, Harry's uh, description of his beliefs, it can be uh, predicted that Harry's class will fo be focusing more on speaking activities. For Afi, his class will be focusing on listening and speaking and writing. So from the beliefs that have been stated, we can predict the classroom practices. So what I have asked you to do last week is actually a reflection process. When you reflect on your beliefs, you have started doing a reflection. So what is reflection? Reflection is a process whereby you reflect upon an incident. So this is when you reflect on a lesson that you have done a particular um, incident whereby the lesson did not go as planned or it can be on a particular concept like teacher's beliefs. So when I ask you to reflect on your teacher's beliefs or describe your beliefs, so that is a form of reflection. So the process of reflection occurs. But for that assignment, what I did was I asked you to answer the questions given. So the questions that were given are to guide you so that your thinking or your reflection has a purpose. All right. And the reason why uh, we have those questions is to get you to reflect in a form of a structure. So it's more structured, it's guided and more structured. So in the case of a uh, reflection that we want to focus on this week, it's more of reflecting on an incident. And why are we doing this? Doing this is because we want um, we want to understand what we do, and then we want to study our decisions in class and how these decisions impact our teaching. All right, and it is better to under uh, it's a better understanding of the problem that we face in class and how we solve it so that's the reason why we reflect to look at an issue what happened during our lesson and how do we solve this issue and it will then affect our future uh, classes that we conduct so there are two approaches in reflection is the the common sense reflection and reflective practice. So this common sense reflection is a reflection that doesn't have much structure. It's like you enter a class, <clears throat> you finish your class and after class you started thinking about what happened in that class. But by after thinking about what happened, you did not do anything because it's not structured. It's, it lacks focus. All right? However, when it is reflective practice, you think about something that happened in a more structured way in a sense that you talk, you, you reflect on the problem and then you think about the solution to the problems. So it is more structured. And when you do reflective practice, which, which is the process that we want to focus on, you either reflect in action or reflect on action. So what is reflect in action? Reflect in action means you reflect while the incident is happening. For example, you want, uh, in, in, a, in a lesson, you wanted to do a role play. But when you ask the students to do the role play, you see they were very passive. So you decided to change to small group discussion. 
So your decision to change the activity while you were in class is an example of reflection in action. Reflection on action is a reflection that happened after the incident has happened. That means you have finished class, you go back to the staff room and then you start you started thinking about the incident that happened in that class. For example, this role play that was supposed to um, happen but did not happen. So why? You started reflecting. Why why um why the students were not willing to participate? What happened? Why you were able to do this role play in another group but not in this group? So all these questions that you have, uh, questions related to the incident that happened. So this is reflection on action. So reflection in action is while you reflect, you change your decision while you were while you are teaching. Reflection on action is you reflect on an incident that happened during class, but this is after you have finished class. The reflection happened after you finished class. So, um, reflective practice is being emphasized in teacher education. Particularly, we emphasize um, students to, ref to reflect on their lessons and their decisions or actions during practical teaching. So, uh, usually student teachers are being asked to keep a journal and reflect on their teaching uh, while writing while writing this journal. So you write the journal entries while reflecting on your teaching. And there's a structure provided to guide you in reflecting about your practice. Why, why do you need to reflect? Because many teachers feel that this is a very is a very um, daunting task. It's, it's, it takes time to reflect. So why you have to reflect? why it is an important component in teacher education is for self-improvement if we do not reflect on our actions we cannot make changes we it's like we are assessing ourselves all right we look at ourselves what what were the issues why why uh why the this the decisions that we have made we have done this lesson plan we wanted to conduct it this way but it did not happen so what was the reason we investigate and then we find solutions to it and we test out whether it works or not so that's why reflection is very important at the beginning of your experience in the real context or in the real context itself even in service teachers also need to do reflective practice because we're always testing on certain certain activities certain techniques so it's good to reflect Reflection actually increase your knowledge and understanding of yourself and your teaching. So when you understand how you teach and what you have done, whether they are effective or not, you learn from this experience. So remember we talk about teachers' beliefs. So teachers' beliefs influence our classroom decisions. So when we do reflection, we're actually looking at Decisions that we make based on our beliefs and then we conduct the class based on that and when we reflect it we, we may be um, Revisiting our beliefs and thinking about our beliefs that may may not Align with the context that we are in so you see changes may happen to our beliefs when we reflect because we look at the real context and we realize that oh this this is not um feasible but this one is is better right so we change our decisions so if you wish to improve as a teacher then what is required is a form of reflection that is more than just thinking about an experience but doing something about it to make it better so why pre-service teachers engage in the process of reflection to improve your practice so that when you teach it becomes a more effective teaching and the learners learn more effectively and also is to renew your practices and understand the effects of your teaching when you teach you use new techniques you use your new knowledge 
So it's, it's a way of testing out whether it works or not. And it's also to help you in figuring out solutions to conflicts that you face in the classroom. Because obviously teaching is very complex, it's very uh, subjective, it's very uh, different when you are in a, the real context. Okay, so there might be conflicts. So how do we solve these conflicts? We cannot we cannot just leave all these conflicts. You cannot, remember the common sense uh, reflection? is whereby you reflect on an incident but you did not do anything about it. So that's why we have this reflective practice. So that we identify an incident and then we find a solution. So we become a critical, reflective student teacher. Alright? So there's a framework that can guide this reflection. We're using the four-step reflection process uh, by York, Barr, Summers, Gear, and Monty. It's very easy because it's in the form of a sequence, a process of thinking. So the first thing that you need to do is you have to identify uh, an incident that happened on that day or a problem or an issue. So the first thing is you describe what happened. So what happened is, okay, probably like the, just now, the, the example that we have, you wanted to do a role play, but the students were not willing to do it. And then you move to the second uh, step, which is why it happened. So you do a little bit of analysis and interpretation, why it happened. Okay, probably it happened because the students find the um, coming up with dialogues, without you know having any kind of gui guidance from the teacher is very difficult so what have i learned from the incident overall meaning and application this is the third one the third stage so then you realize that okay probably here i should have given them uh, sample dialogues and maybe what i can do is i get the students to just uh, add some dialogues of their own but the main dialogue has been given to them the main script has been given to them. So that's that's what you have learned from the incident. And the last stage is what should I do next? So what should I do next is you can come up with the script, the idea that you have just now, and you test it out and see whether it works or not. If it works, then that is a good solution to the problem that you experience. So this is one way of doing a, a, a reflection, a reflective practice that is very structured and easy to do. So when you do this, when you apply this framework, these are the questions that you may want to ask. The first, for the first stage, you ask the question, what happened? What? What happened? What did I do? What did the students do? Second stage, why? Why do I think things happen in this way? The third stage, so what? Why do I, what have I learned from this? How could I improve it? And the last one, now what? If I face similar situation in future, what should I do? So there's an example of a journal entry here that focuses on reflection using four steps reflection framework. You can have a look at it. All right. And then what I want you to do is a task for you to do is I need you to do a reflection using four steps reflection framework. Like the example I've given here. Uh, on your right something like this simple like this you just give me and uh, you send to me uh, through my guru okay a summary of what we have um, we have um, heard today you have heard today what is reflection reflection is an action that 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 is done the process of thinking while doing the lesson or after the lesson right so what are the approaches in reflection? We have common sense reflection and reflective practice. Okay, so we're focusing on reflective practice whereby there's reflection in action. While you are teaching, you change your decision or reflection on action that happened after the lesson. And we also have discussed why we reflect and the four-step process framework to guide the reflection. Thank you.